Hi, welcome to my channel. In here I'm sharing the process of how I approach painting realistic botanicals in watercolor. So if you like flowers, watercolor or art, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. So today I'm going to show you how I painted this white tulip. Now painting white flowers with watercolors can be intimidating because you don't use white paint so you paint essentially the shadow parts and it's very easy to go muddy and dirty when you paint white flowers. So we're gonna try to approach this delicately and I'll show you how I would paint it. Now this tulip is a class on my Patreon so if you would like to paint along and have access to full step-by-step -step class then you can find link in the description box down below. So these are the colors that I'm using and for painting mid-tones I like to use neutral tint pre-mixed gray color even though I am a fan of mixing my own colors but this particular color I really like because it doesn't separate and so I use it as a base for all my grays and I simply change it and adjust it by adding some additional colors depending on what colors I'm going to be using throughout the entire painting. So I try to choose limited palette and if I use yellow, blue or red I try to use the same blue, the same yellows and reds for entire project. For example, I'm going to be using the same blue and yellow for mixing my greens. So I start my every painting with laying down base layers with wet on wet technique. That applies for bigger petals and bigger areas and when I'm going to paint very tiny little areas later on you'll see I don't use wet on wet because it's just too small of an area. But to start with, it's clean water glaze first on the paper and then I apply color on top of it. And that gives me this very soft and flowing and light layers where there are no hard edges. So it's great for base layers. And I apply most of my colors. I started with my blue gray, added my yellow gray and always before it dries out, I lift off the highlights. Now moving along, I don't have any more of those big petals and I have a little bit more detailed and shadow work. So before I apply what on what technique, I paint in some of that detail and some of those lines and veins. So that would be a little bit more obvious and easier for me to understand what's going on. So once I apply few shadows and few uh, of those details, I will apply what on what and the base layer on top of it. So whenever I'm painting with wet on dry, meaning without wetting the paper first, I always use slightly lighter colors because they don't dry out much lighter as when you paint with wet on wet does. So it's very easy to go too strong, so you need to use your lighter colors. And always with clean down brush, I soften away any hard edges when you paint with wet paint on dry paper. So because when you paint wet on wet, you have all this very flowy and soft edges everywhere but when you paint with wet on dry paper you always need to make sure you soften any hard edges. So once I did all that detail now I apply a very thin clean water glaze first and now very pale base layer on top of it to soften all the detail. Also I'm starting to apply my yellow color at the base of the tulip. And before it dries with clean damp brush, I always lift off the highlights. So now that the base layers are finished, I can start paint the tonal values. So I have now, you see, two brushes, one that I'm painting with and the other one I'm using to soften all the hard edges of each little glaze. So the way I paint the tonal values and uh, build tonal values, I should say, is uh, with very pale transparent watercolors I paint little sections at a time so I don't focus on a tulip as a whole or the, the petal as a whole but just a very little section of it apply a little bit of color and then soften away any hard edges and that way I don't feel rushed and I can really focus and take my time and keep referring to the reference photo and just build those tonal values very slowly and gradually now when you look at some paintings and some look quite flat and some for some reason look very three-dimensional and has that depth and so in order to create that depth that sometimes you don't even know um, how to explain it is by applying multiple layers of transparent watercolors. So the more layers the more 
uh, lively and deep the painting will look but the point is not to get too strong or too dark or too muddy so you use very very transparent watercolors and layering them over and over again gives this luminosity that watercolor can provide so even when you paint a white flower which you would think uh, it doesn't have much color you can see how many layers it still requires in order to create this three-dimensional shape so now that the old layers are done and i think i'm finished with tonal values and it looks about right what is missing it is very fine detail and veining that tulip has so i'm using very pale colors again and the very very tip of my brush and applying very light brush strokes to create those very soft and subtle lines so now you can go uh, wrong very easily if you apply to a strong and obvious line so they need to be very subtle on white flower but they can make or break the painting so practice those brush strokes on a separate piece of paper making sure they're very very light and subtle and in order to create those very thin lines you need to have fairly dry paint because if you have too much water on your brush the lines will come out quite thick So now that the flower head is finished, we can paint in the stem and the leaves. So let's mix the colors. So I'm using the same yellows, Quinacridone Gold, Arlen Yellow and Phthalo Blue and a little bit of pink to make the greens quite natural and earthy. And so I'm going to use the same pigments for all my green mixes, but they vary in strength and saturation. And so even with the same pigments, you can create multiple uh, shades of green. I will also need a very gray pink sort of color for the stem so I'm again using neutral tint as a base and adding colors to adjust and make it look sort of brownish grayish pink. So I'm gonna start with wet on wet as my base layers as I usually do and because the leaf doesn't have very light white highlights I apply my first base layer all over the leaf so basically the top parts and the inside parts of the leaf and I start with my lighter colors and as I move down I apply darker colors and I start creating that slight tonal difference Before the glaze dries, with clean down brush, I lift off a little bit of highlight around the edges where the leaf curves. You might need to do that a few times and in order to be lifting off those quite thin veins, the glaze needs to be damp but it's almost where it dries out. So I do the same on my stem as well. So once the stem is dry, I apply a second layer of wet on wet, but this time I'm gonna also apply green color, which I wasn't able to do on the first layer because the water glaze has dried out too quickly. So I'm gonna deepen the color with my gray pink mix and adding green color in all of the areas that I can see. So for the leaf, I'm going to start painting now separate parts of it. So I'm going to start with the inside part of the leaf and I apply clean water glaze because I'm going to be painting wet on wet because we have lots of uh, colors still to apply. So I'm starting with my lighter, starting from the top and go all the way down and I will keep picking up my darker colors as I go down into the shadow part. 
So now I need to let all the layers dry completely, the stem and leaf, and we're gonna start building the tonal value just as the same way we did on the tulip flower head. So with very transparent thin watercolors, we start applying colors in single small areas at a time and softening all the hard edges with clean down brush. And we keep doing that little areas at a time until we build the tonal values to our liking. And I like this part and painting that way because I really can now take my time and concentrate on a painting because when you paint wet on wet, it's while the technique is amazing for base layers and many other uh, things, but it is a little bit more rushed because first of all, the water glaze is drying and the color is flowing everywhere. So you need to manage it. And so it can be as detailed and relaxed. So this part where you paint just small sections at a time you can really take your time and examine your reference photo and just build the tonal values um, gradually without rushing So now that our tonal values are correct about, let's say 89-90%, now is my favorite part, dry brush. And I'm using my favorite brush for that, number zero by Winsor Newton Series 7. And now I'm gonna be using very small brush strokes. And in the areas where I want to build up color, I use crosshatch technique that you can see now me testing out on a piece of paper. And where I want to smooth out, I use tiny brush strokes in the direction of the form that I'm painting. And so I try to brush entire object in order to put out the last detail, but most importantly, to really give that depth and um, luminosity to the painting and just makes it less flat. And also the most important part, it really smooths it out. So I love those layers to be very smooth and you can see in the glaze, those tiny little areas of caps in the glaze that I'm filling in with those small brush strokes. And especially on this leaf, you will see how that dry brush transforms the leaf and makes it just different. And I think this technique is what makes the difference from average painting to great painting. So I would highly suggest anyone practicing the dry brush technique. This technique is one of those techniques that uh, probably takes the longest and really requires lots of patience. But for me personally, it's my favorite, favorite technique. And I could just do hours of that. And sometimes I can get lost and overdo it. So that's also a danger to not overdo it. So very last thing is to paint in those very subtle veins on a leaf as well. So they're not very straight. As you see, I'm testing on a piece of paper. They're sort of going wiggly in all directions, vertically and horizontally. So I'm going to try to capture those because I think capturing all those details is what makes paintings really interesting. And so painting that detail will be the last thing we're gonna do and the tulip painting will be finished so i hope you enjoyed and maybe you will even uh, join my patreon community and will try that tulip yourself if you do i would love to see it and please share we have a private uh, facebook group for all my patrons and i'll see you in the future videos bye bye